Translating a graph simply means to shift the graph horizontally and or vertically, and all the parts of the graph shift together as a unit. Now, we've already had some experience with vertical translations, that is, adding or subtracting a number at the end of the equation here. A positive number at the end shifts the graph up, while a negative number at the end shifts the graph down. To translate a graph horizontally, your shifting number is in with the x. In this case, you'll find that the positive number in here actually shifts the graph to the left, that is, in the negative direction, and a negative number in here shifts the graph to the right, that is, in the positive direction. Let's look at some examples. Example 1. Sketch the graph represented in this equation. And we recognize this as a quadratic, that is, degree 2. So let's draw our base quadratic y equals x squared. Now, we see that we have two translations in this one. This negative 3 at the end tells us that the graph is shifted down by 3, and that's our vertical translation. This plus 2 in here tells us that the graph is shifted left by 2, and that's our horizontal translation. And voila! There's our resulting graph. Example 2. Provide the equation of the graph shown. In this case, we look at the graph and we recognize that it's an absolute relation. So let's start with our base absolute equation. y equals the absolute of x. Let's recognize that it's reflected vertically. So we'll put a negative out front here. Next, we see that the vertex is not on the origin, but is shifted up by 2. So let's add a plus 2 to the end of the equation. Finally, we note that it's shifted horizontally by 1 to the right. Thus, we need to add a negative 1 in here with the x. And we're done. We have our equation. Example 3 provided the graph of the function f in terms of x, sketch the graph represented by the modified function. First, let's recognize the vertical reflection indicated by the negative out front here. We also see that we have two translations in this one. This plus 2 tells us that the graph is shifted up by 2. That's our vertical translation. And this negative 1 in here tells us that the graph is shifted right by 1. That's our horizontal translation. And we're done. There's our resulting graph. For our last example, example 4, we look at it a little bit differently. If y equals x minus h all squared plus k, then what is the value of h for these graphs? Well, for the first graph here, we can see that it's shifted left by 3. And we remember that to shift a graph left by 3, that means we want a plus 3 in with the x. Now, given our equation here, what is the value of h that results in x plus 3 within these brackets? Well, we know that two negatives together creates a positive. So, if we were to put an h of negative 3 in there, then we would have minus negative 3. And we can replace those two negatives with a positive, and the result is x plus 3, exactly what we wanted. So an h equals negative 3 makes it work perfect. Let's look at the second graph we see that it's shifted right by 3. And we remember that to shift the graph right by 3, we want an x minus 3 in our brackets. So, what value of h results in an x minus 3 in here? Well, we know that a minus plus creates a negative. 
So we'd want h to be plus 3. And the negative positive can be replaced by just a minus. x minus 3. Exactly what we wanted. So h equals plus 3 suits for this case.